Do you miss me? I'm back from Crete. If you haven't watched the videos yet from Crete, if you feel some disturbance in the force, you're actually right. This happened in November. I tried really hard to deliver the new episode in the last year. As you can guess, I didn't succeed. Let's continue, but keep it in mind that most of the footage is from November. You are really lucky because now you can do it in one playlist, all the videos, and I think this series is my best so far. But today we are not here particularly because of this, right? When I got back to the civilization, I was shocked. And by not the weather... So I would like to address this issue and then we talk a bit about the future of this series and what changes do I want to make and what changes do you want to make and how can you make some changes. When the trip actually started, the pound was around 350 Hungarian forints. Then suddenly it became 335. The difference was only 6 days. But let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. When I started to exchange money back in January 2016, one pound was 428 Hungarian forints. During the course of three months, it seemed to stabilize at 400. It was easy to calculate with, so I was not happy, but it was okay. But it dropped to 350, then reached a local minimum with the 335. What has happened? Brexit, of course. Brexit, where a common prediction was a huge and rapid crash of the pound. But in reality, this was not the case. Slow, but mostly negative changes started to make the sterling weaker and weaker and weaker. The government realized something needs to be done in this situation. So they came up with this brilliant idea to make the pound stronger again. The only problem is that it kinda doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, I can see this very poorly performed magic trick becoming reality. The dark future when British people basically start to use Euro whether they want or not. Let's see what are the results of this process. I did a price comparing video back in the past, if you remember. So I can compare with those prices the new after Brexit ones. I'm just cherry picking some items. I don't want to cover everything. Just to give you a few examples. As you can see, the prices are almost pretty much the same. I almost forgot to check the most important item. It is just a bit different and it's a bit more expensive. Let's move on to another crucial topic, rent prices. The average rental value is higher than it was before, but the interesting thing is that the difference is even not 2%, which is a good food for thought because we are in London and we are living in a huge price boom. So it is not a huge change, which is a big change in the trajectory of the market, if you can follow me. A lot of people asked, how does it feel to have a major drop in the overall value of your salary? But so far, as I can see, there is no big change if we are spending it here in the UK. Yeah, if you want to exchange it, this is another topic. At first, that's always a big mistake to exchange your money to another currency. The pound lost around 22% of its value between those measurement points what I set up in the first part of the video. I think that the imported goods are going to be more expensive as the time passes, but for now, I don't feel any drastic change in my life, fortunately. I know what you're thinking right now. You may ask yourself, how is it possible that I found this brilliant background? But this is not the question right now. We are starting the second part of the video. And what would you need to expect from this second part of the video? Okay, so we had a question in the last episode. 
And this question was a really simple one. Do you want me not to continue the Hungrish vlog series? And if you put there a like, this is a no. And if you put there a dislike, this is a yes. Just to remind you, this is the video itself. And as you can see, I set the lower limit of success to 30 likes. If we look closer, I received 67 likes and one dislike. After doing the math, believe it or not, but it turns out to be exactly 98% of no's for my question. Therefore, I continue. But before we do that, I'd like to give you some behind the scenes because I think it is fun and you may understand it a bit more. What does it take to produce a video? I'm giving you an approximation for time for each phases and a rough estimation for it with my current salary because I know that you love numbers especially money. The first is of course preparation. It can be really time consuming and lately I need to organize my ideas and write scripts. As you can see. If it is done, I actually start to record with my main camera or the more compact one, sometimes with the drone. I'm already not a beginner I would say, but still I can lose the footage like now and have to re-record it. Next is the editing, which is again a very slow process usually. So actually this is how and where I'm editing the videos. I'm putting all those small pieces, actually bigger pieces and getting them smaller with this special application which requires a lot of time. Post preparation, like creating thumbnails, effects and other really fun stuff. And to finish it off, the delicious subtitles. When you finally feel that your work is complete, an additional two hours, there you go. But I want to keep it bilingual at any cost. To summarize it up, one episode roughly costs 20 hours in time and an imaginary 100,000 Hungarian forints, which adds up to at least 420 hours and more than 2 million forints. These are just rough numbers to measure the effort what's there in the series. Now that you understand a bit more, I'd like to show you some interesting data which are under the hood. During the course of one year, you watched 100,000 minutes of videos, which equals 69 days, which is a lot if you ask me. But here's a real struggle of a small YouTuber like me, namely how to measure if my content is good or good enough. I already know that views are just pretty much random numbers given that the YouTube algorithm always changing and we are talking about really small volume. Let's take a look at the likes. My most liked video received 21 likes but lately they get around 5 or 6 in this series. Nowhere close to 30. This is the reason why I set the limit for 30. I thought it will make a difference and it did. Let's take a look at the subscribers. I don't think about you as number, but as a community or like a big family. Without you, this channel wouldn't exist in this form. 46 people left our family already, but no hard feelings for them. It is not a big surprise that most of you are watching me from Hungary, but 69 viewers joined already from the UK. But my absolute favorite is Mother Russia where I have minus one subscribers, not zero, minus one. As I imagine, a poor viewer wanted to subscribe, but in the moment of clicking, a magical creature appeared and turned the button to an unsubscribe one. So basically, I have nothing to measure how good a video turned out to be. I'm always changing something, but I seldom have the feedback. Is it a good direction or not? This was of course one of the causes why I wanted to finish this series because I didn't have the feedback. If you have a minute or so, you could just give me a comment or if you're in a hurry but you like the video, you could just click the like button. It's kind of unusual. I say that you can, you can click the dislike button as well, but for this one to count, I require a comment. This would be a really huge help for me, you couldn't even imagine and makes YouTube great again. I think there's plenty of stuff what I'm giving in return. Let's see. I figured out maybe it's easier for you to distinguish between the different types of videos like uh, the Hangrish blog and the travel blog which should get a flag like this for every country and my personal stuff and yeah the rest. The thumbnails are going to be covered with this layer but the bigger thing is I think is the control over the content. Let me explain. At the very end of every video I'm going to give you three plus one options to choose from as the topic of the next video. 
In the top right corner you will see an icon which is a poll and in this poll you have option to vote for each and every topic. Three possible topics are coming from me and hopefully the last one, the extra one, is coming from the top comments under every video. But believe me, I still have a lot of ideas. As you can see on the door of my wardrobe, pretty much just full of video ideas. But now I will give you three plus one options. Are you ready? The first topic is work. As I progressed in that part of my life as well, I can give you now some explanation and descriptions. What does an ethical hacker do? Mm. The next one is food. I made some experiments already with traditional, not so traditional, expensive and the cheapest food that you can find around. So I can show you some yummy, interesting and weird food also, if you want me to do so. The third one is heating. And if you thought that this slide cannot get worse, check this out. While I let you know that we didn't have heating and warm water for more than two weeks in the coldest period of the last year. Do you want to know how and why? I can tell it to you, if you want so. The last for now is the interview with a headhunter. I'm planning to make an interview with not a vampire this time, but with a recruiter in the IT security field. But I think it can be beneficial for everyone who is looking for a job in the UK. I'm really excited about this because I'm also curious about a lot of questions and a lot of answers. So this is the end for now. I'm scheduling a video per month from this series. And please vote for the option what you like the most right here. The next video is going to be about this topic. Enjoy your life wherever you might be and see you in February. Ciao!